what do I do on a normal day working in the hospital? I guess this is something I get asked quite a bit and especially as a few of you guys have been asking after my um, what dietitians do videos for dietitians week, I thought I would share a little bit of my usual day working in a hospital. So my previous video, I discussed a little bit more about my experience as a dietitian, a little bit more about my, um, my career so far. So just to put things into perspective, you might want to go back to the earlier video. But so as I said in today, I'm going to just run you through my usual day from when I wake up to when I go to bed. Yes, I am in my uniform. I don't normally wear my uniform walking around the house, but thought again, might just put things into perspective a little bit when I'm filming this video. Also, just to let you know again before I start off, if you like this video, let me know in the comment section below. Give me a little thumbs up or a little heart. It really helps me get the message out there to more of you guys as well. So thanks so much already. On a normal day working in the hospital, I wake up probably around seven o'clock. I would have my breakfast. So my current breakfast, because it changes depending on the season and what I have in the house, but it tends to be frozen berries, which are defrost, some yogurt and some cereal on it and then some nuts and seeds and things and then always a coffee as well. And then I get to work by cycling. So I have, I live about maybe half an hour cycle away from work. So it's always kind of a nice way to get a bit of exercise in, in the morning and it just gets my blood pumping and gets me ready for my day. So when I get into work then, my first thing I normally do is settle in, obviously get rid of, you know, take my cycling gear off, put on my uniform. Um, and then I put on my bleep as well, which I carry around on a chain around my neck. So I always carry my bleep around just to make sure that I'm always reachable. We don't really have mobile phones working in the hospital here. So if someone needs to contact me, I'm not always at my desk because I work on the wards as well. So someone can just type in my number and it means I can call them back on whatever phone they are closest to. Um, and if I'm covering for someone else as well that day, because obviously people do need annual leave, I might grab their bleep and put it on my chain as well. Um, depends on the day, I might have one to three bleeps normally. So then I start my day off by having a little look over my emails. So my emails are a great way for me to stay in touch with colleagues about projects. I might get new referrals from some of the consultants or other dietitians from other hospitals via email. Um, so I check my emails first and then I would have a little look at my list. So. As you guys might know, I work as a dietitian in nephrology or kidney disease. So I do have some patients who come in maybe three days a week for dialysis. So I would call them my dialysis outpatients. Then I might also have some inpatients. So normally it tends to be kidney type patients who are on the ward. And now with COVID-19 happening, things have all been a bit confusing and I just seem to be doing general med and some nephrology on the wards. So I have two major lists I look at. I look at my inpatient list, which is normally for my ward, and I look at what patients might need to be reviewed that day. Um, and then I also look at my dialysis list. So I might look at which patients are due their review. I normally kind of put them by month, or if I have more urgent patients, patients who are at risk of malnutrition, I might try and see those more often. So I'll just have a look at my dialysis list, see who's coming in that day, see who I might want to see. And I guess looking at all my lists then, I think one of the biggest things you start getting with experience and something we have to work really hard on training our students to do as well is prioritizing. You've only got, I've got 7.4 hours in my day to do my work. So I need to make sure I see the patients who most urgently need to be seen. Now for me, that's actually been more complicated than usual because I have some very acute ward patients, but then also my dialysis patients are a little bit behind on their reviews. And so they start becoming more urgent, but because they are more chronic and they tend to be in hospital three days a week, I try to see those whenever I get a chance, but my ward patients who require artificial nutrition, such as tube feeding, um, or who may just have come out of ICU, I tend to see those more urgently. So I tend to make a list. I try to prioritize my patients. So I try to do a lot of my phone calls for dialysis patients in the morning, and then towards the end of the day, I might go on to the ward. Um, so this kind of helps me to keep my uniform clean, keep me clean, rather than doing the ward stuff first, maybe putting myself at risk of infection and then spreading it towards the office at the end of the day. Of course, in the midst of all the prioritizing of patients, I also have to try and plan in time during my week for some project work. I suppose working as a senior dietitian, um, you do have some level of responsibility for service development. So making sure that your dietetic service you're providing isn't the most efficient it can be, that your patients are getting the right care, that if any new information comes out and new evidence that you are able to apply that. Um, and I normally try to do that through projects. So one of the projects I'm, I've been working on recently is um, getting a, a kidney menu started in the hospital. 
So that involves talking to catering, talking to managers, talking to other dietitians, seeing what might work and how we can adjust the kidney menu to be a little bit more, well, to include more variety and also to be safe for the kidney patients. So yeah, that's what I normally do in the morning. I try to plan my list, plan some project work time, and then I go for a coffee because like I need coffee. So I have a quick coffee with my colleagues. Normally use this time as well to do a bit of brainstorming, chatting about, you know, if anyone's stuck for time, anyone's having too many patients to see, we might spread out our caseload a little bit during coffee time. So what I might do in this video is I'll go through a kind of an average of what I do with a dialysis outpatient and then a, an inpatient. And just, I normally try to see about six, seven, up to nine patients a day. So I'm only gonna give you one of those. So if I'm going to see one of my dialysis outpatients, um, well, at the moment, actually, what I'm doing is I'm trying to call them rather than going onto the dialysis ward. But normally I would have had to check the schedule, see when they're in and try and meet them on the ward when they're having dialysis. Um, but what I will first of all do is I will have a look at their recent bloods. I will collect any medical information from the system we have. We have all their medical history updated on, a, on an electronic system for kidney patients. So I'll have a little look if they're gaining weight or losing weight, or sometimes kidney patients may be gaining a little bit more weight between dialysis sessions, which might mean that they're drinking a little bit more water um, or not maybe passing as much urine as usual. And then normally I would um, talk to the patient themselves. So I might ask them, you know, what they've been eating, looking at their appetite, um, if they've noticed any swelling on their ankles, any itchiness, which might be a sign of high phosphate levels. Um, I would ask them to normally run through a normal day of eating as well, so I can have a little look at how they're doing, um, what they're eating, maybe calculate that nutrition intake if I need to. I might ask them about their medication. So I know some medications need to be taken at certain times or at meals, so I might check that make sure that they're still taking all the medication that I would have recommended for them to take, so vitamins or um, maybe some phosphate binders to help take some of the phosphate out of their diet. And I guess because I've seen these patients for several years now, I might ask them how their dog is or their family member. Um, it's really important to build a bit of rapport as well because I know a lot about them, they know a lot about me at this stage and we want to keep that relationship going. And based on all that information that I've collected, I might then see if the patient is like if I notice anything that needs to be addressed so any further education I need to provide or if you know I see their weights going down and I wonder if there's something else going on I might then provide a little bit of information so I might ask the patient if they would are happy for me to talk to them about some certain areas or if they've already identified things they want to address and then we'll normally come up with a plan of certain goals that they and I will work on um, to help them move closer to these goals. Often a lot of my plan also involves talking to the medical team, maybe asking for more blood results to be done or maybe asking to start some medications um, and also to update the medical team on anything that I found might be relevant for them to know as well. So yeah, that would be a normal assessment and then I would do a medical note normally on the electronic system as well and I might send out any diet sheets that the patient is interested in um, receiving. So I tend to do about three to four of those assessments on a usual day. So after seeing a few of my dialysis patients in the morning, I will go for lunch and I normally get my lunch in the staff canteen. We have a little bit of a subsidized staff canteen which is great. Food is normally what is served to the patients but it tends to be pretty good most of the time um, and I tend to meet up with my colleagues then for lunch. It's great just to catch up especially if we because we've been home so much with Covid. I feel like my colleagues are almost the friends I see most at this stage. And so after lunch I might then go on to the wards to see some of my inpatients. At the moment it means we might need to put on a gown or we just wear the mask going on to the wards. And what I normally would do then for seeing some of my ward patients is I would gather all the information again from their medical notes, I might check the system on the computer for their blood results, I will look through the nursing files to see what medications they've been receiving, if there's any new weights, if they're moving their bowels, and then I would go into the patient as well to again ask them how they've been eating, what their appetite's been like, and a lot of the time actually the patients are for example not able to eat, they're being artificially fed so I might ask them how their stomach feels, if they're feeling hungry or thirsty or any of these things that we, I might be able to address with their feed. Um, if I feel that a patient's not able to eat enough food again I might then try some nutrition drinks with them if they are able to eat or I might talk to them about the idea of starting artificial nutrition so just tube feeding if I feel that it is appropriate. So again then after collecting all my information from my patient I might still talk to my doctors and the doctors who are looking after the patient or maybe even the physiotherapist or the occupational therapist just to get a broader picture of how the patient is doing. And then with all this information I again do the same thing, try to identify some key nutrition issues that might need to be addressed 
and then I try to come up with a plan of how to address them, keeping the patient's wishes in mind, talking with the patient if possible about what they want and what direction they want to go in. And then I write a very detailed note in the medical chart. And um, we have lots of things we need to talk about in our charts and often I feel that dietitians write the longest notes ever, but it is a great summary for us because maybe in a week or so I might go back to the patient. At least my note has all the information from then. So I just have to see what's happened since then rather than going through the whole chart again. And so at the end of my day, I would have seen possibly six, seven, eight, nine patients. And I would go back to my desk and I would, if I have time, I'll try to do some project work. But normally then I spend time updating my patient lists. Again, I'm always trying to keep my lists up to date. So my list, for example, is, you know, the most important things about a patient, you know, their name, where they are, um, what weights they've been, just a little bit of their medical history and what my plan is. So that if I, for example, call in sick one day, my colleague can just take over by looking at my list. And also for my dialysis patients, I'll update the list with any key priorities that I need to address and when I hope to see them next. And yeah, so at the end of my day then, if I've done any project work, I've done my patient lists, I then update my statistics. So we have to keep statistics in the hospital as to what patient I saw, how long I saw them for, what my intervention was. And this is really important so that the, our hospital managers and our dietitian manager can plan the service. For example, if they see you know, that dietitians are seeing a lot of a certain type of patient, maybe we need to bring more resources into that area. After doing my stats, I take off my uniform, wrap it in a bag, get ready to wash it at home. So if I'm going home for the weekend, because I don't work Mondays and Tuesdays, I normally send a little email to my colleagues who might be covering for me or who might be doing the other half of my um, caseload, I might just send them an update as to what patients need to be seen, any things that I felt need to be addressed. And yeah, then I put on my out of office and head on home on my bike. And normally after work, I try to get a little bit of exercise in. So the cycle, if I'm not too wrecked after my cycle, I might go to the gym or do home workouts nowadays um, or try to go for a walk now that we've got longer evenings as well. I try to cook a dinner and tends to be that I just collapse into bed. I'm exhausted at the end of that kind of working day. So yeah, that's my average working day in a hospital. If you guys have any questions on any of these things, let me know in the comment section below. Happy to answer any questions via DMs as well. And if you like this video, let me know down there with a little happy comment. Maybe give me a thumbs up or heart wherever you're watching this. And don't forget to subscribe as well because it means you get more notifications about when my next videos come out. I'm always accepting content requests. So if you have anything you want me to cover, uh, let me know again down there. So all going well, I will see you again in two weeks time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.